Alright, so today we are going to be watching the full Co Cody and Satori interview from Sam and Colby's Reacts channel. Now guys, a lot of you guys have been really wanting me to watch this. I've been watching debunk videos, I've been watching all that stuff. I, at the end of the day, I've chosen to put my faith in Satori and Cody. Hopefully this uh, answers more questions I think a lot of people have. We'll see, see it myself, and I'm not going to waste any time getting into this. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, show a lot of love, show a lot of support by leaving a comment in the comment section, hit the bell notification so you don't miss another video, catch me live. I normally go live at random, so hit that bell notification to make sure you never miss a live stream. And let's go ahead and dive into this, guys. I'll give you my thoughts during and after the video. The following is the full interview we filmed with Cody and Satori. We have never met or heard of anybody that does exactly this. The closest thing we could find were the Fox sisters during the spiritualist movement, but there are some differences to what they did to what we do. They had to do it in pitch black and they were wearing long dresses. You so couldn't see their shoes or their feet. Yeah, there was a lot of conspiracy surrounding them that they were faking things. We've been doing this for so long, we've never seen anybody that's been able to actually communicate and show proof through sounds. And we just want to say, like, we think this could be something that's, like, groundbreaking to the Okay, uh, not really where I wanted to see this start out with. Okay, so they've heard of the Fox sisters. Now, apparently, so from what I've been told, now, I haven't done my personal research on this, so if you guys can enlighten me in the comments section, I am pretty fucking positive the Fox sisters came out themselves saying that it was all a bunch of parlor tricks and it was fake. That is something they didn't really mention, was that there was a lot, they said there was a lot of speculation that they were fakes. But no, I think from what I've heard, they came out as fake themselves. So to compare yourselves to the Fox sisters, if they did come out as fake, that doesn't, again, that's not really making yourselves look good. Again, I per, I put, I'm putting my trust into you, but it doesn't make you guys look good. The world, and I don't know if you guys understand that. No, you're just buttering us up. I don't I, know. I mean, what, what, you, 100%. Yeah, when you first saw that you could do this, like, what did you think? It was an overnight case. The rest of the team, it led up to this. And finally, the team was like, maybe it's something with you guys. We found out that it was intelligent, whatever the noise was. And we just stayed up that entire night just asking questions. The first thing that was said is, how is this possible? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're like, how is this possible? We have no idea. Started asking them questions as to what they see. They said they see a light, kind of like a beacon that shines up. We sound really loud when we hold each other's hands for some reason. At first, when we started... Okay, that could be kind of hinting at that when they hold hands, it amplifies the knocking. So, going back to the theory that they are fake, right? Going back to that little video that was released back in, I think, 2006, something along those lines, before they met and uh, Cody was actually pulling off the method, it could be more amplified when they're holding hands. So, take that for what you will. Bringing somebody's family member through, I can't remember the first time we did it, but it definitely was very emotional for all of us involved. And now, a few years later, we have learned to just focus in on the alphabet and not so much the emotional part, because yeah. that would be much more difficult to get right. through the session, you know what I mean? It's so, taxing. We still have no idea how it works. All we know is it only works when we hold hands, touched in some physical way, like I hug him or something like that. But then she says it only works when they hold hands. Okay, then how do you explain that 2006 video? Or however long ago that was, how do you explain that? He's doing the method, he's doing the A, B, C, D, E, F, G thing. As soon as we stop touching some sort of physical way, it just completely disappears. So the closest thing we can think of is either like tuning into something, breaking down a barrier, or connecting like wires mm. to sort of make something happen. And we've tried talking to a lot of groundbreaking people in the paranormal, like path pavers and stuff. They've had many different theories. One says it's like a, a, a psychokinetic energy in that kind of spectrum of, of communication. Some people have said it's like a circuit. When we do it, I feel like shin splints in my ankles and she feels it up at her head. So some okay. people feel like the energy is coming through the floor and then out of her. Spirits don't know how it's working either, so it's not like we can ask them how is this possible. We've always wondered why us, so I believe there's more people out there. It may not be knocking noises that they get. Maybe they get visions or something when they hold each other's hands. Do you believe? Well, I always found it interesting. Every spirit you talk to, they already know how to do it. The A, B, C, D, E, F, G kind of thing. So like... You just said that the spirits didn't know how to do it, but it comes off to me like when you go to these different locations and you're automatically just, they start knocking repeatedly, you know, to do the A, B, C, D, E, F, G thing. Maybe that's them catching on. Maybe they just do that because they don't know how to answer. So you feel like just saying A, B, C, D might give them the idea. Hey, just, you know, stop on a, when you want us to stop on a letter or that, you know, right? 
I think that you guys like found each other through like some sort of like a destiny, like it was meant to happen. I think everything's <laughs> meant to happen for sure. Yeah. I think so. Uh, we definitely clicked right away and became fast friends. I think everyone has, you know, somebody out there you're meant to find them. But maybe a best friend or something like that. You know what I mean? There you go. Aww. What if it happens? <laughs> Do you guys think you need to have this connection to supply the spirit's energy? Because if Sam and I were to just ask randomly, it might not happen. Do you think they maybe respect you more because they are used to you? I'm not sure. It might be out of respect. Uh, I do think that we are emitting a lot of energy, so I guess in a way it could be fueling something to happen because we've done sessions before and sometimes we've let go and like lights have flickered in the house or like sounds have started in the house still even after we're touching. It might just be an energy battery that sort of just keeps going a little bit after. It might. And, and there's been investigations where we've done where we've asked Spirit, you know, what are you able to do in this physical world? Are you able to move a chair or something like that? That. And we had one spirit come through one time and says, a newspaper, I can move a newspaper. So we're like, okay, let's find a newspaper. And we set it up, walked away, and you see the newspaper get pressed down and then lift back up again. So that's wow. interesting. I think it depends on the spirit as well. I picture it as each spirit kind of has a, as a different battery level. And the higher the battery level, the more they can interact with this environment. And maybe Sator and I are able to fuel that. Yes. Maybe, uh, maybe it's like charging a room with EMF or something like that. I think it so. works on the same thing. That's pretty cool. That, that's a good way to look at it. I mean, I've always kind of viewed spirits as the same. You know, some might be better charged than other spirits, and some may be able to do more than certain spirits. Uh, like demons, for example, are probably a bit more powerful than the average ghost. Like a ghost, might, a spirit might actually be able to tug your, your shirt, right? Or, or maybe like make something move slightly, but a demon could scratch you. Yeah. Did you have to tr uh, train? It definitely has progressed since we started. The consistency or loudness or everything? Yeah, absolutely. It drained us a lot at first. We would only talk for like five minute increments and then we'd have to wait a few days. Now it's definitely progressed and we can do it more on command. Okay. Why the Conjuring House? Do you house? think this house in particular is more special than others? Definitely, in my opinion. I think this house is something different than anywhere else I've ever been. I think the property takes up about 70% of the puzzle, and then the house is a percentage, and then the families that move into this house are another percentage, which may be why the Perrin family created the perfect storm for what happened to them. And we've kind of noticed a shift with the spirits every time the house changes ownership. Since Jacqueline purchased it, we've been having a lot more contact. New spirits have come forward that want to live here and, and enjoy this place a lot. We've been to hundreds of of places around the United States. And this property is probably one of the most unique places we've ever been. There's just so many layers to this place that it's hard to comprehend. There's some things we know that we can't say, but there are some things that spirits have said, like there's just been something here that was that predates all of us. There were some things that have been here a long, long time. Sometimes they say that it's just, they can get here at the speed of like a thought. The King Philip's War was nearby and there's this whole theory that, you know, they cursed the land and some people theorize that that kind of has leaked over here to this this area. I think it's something with the land. And that's what Ed and Lorraine thought too when they first got here. They thought the land was the issue. The land and the house, not anybody in particular living in the house. Can we tell the story about a couple spirits yeah. in the sales? Yeah, I, I think we should. There was a... <laughs> <laughs> so there was a story that we were that is so bizarre oh my god i'm not sure if it was my headset it could have been my headset i just got a loud ringing sensation through my ears and it kind of made my other ear move that's not good i might need to go get that checked i don't know that was weird. Told by the spirits of the house. Not Abigail, but there were two spirits named Jonathan and Matthew that were here. They were not at any point living here in history. We asked them, when was the first time you ever came here? Because you're staying here, but you're not from here. So what kept you or brought you here? And they said, well, we saw a light one day and we walked through it and we ended up here and we really liked it. We asked them who they saw and they described everybody that was sitting at the table the night of the parent seance. They said a name of a medium that was there and they said that they saw a light and they walked through it through it and ended up here so it's almost like something might have opened up or attracted them that night i believe there could be openings wow. or like areas cool. for spirits to come through in different times and different places yeah i mean a door could have been left open there's been a lot of people who have come here that theorize that there's different portals on the property as to why that is we have no idea maybe it's the geological makeup of the land and, and things like that i definitely think a door was opened by someone at some point and that door obviously was never closed if if we believe the seance happened the way that it 
they say it happened. Big thing with this property is you have a river running right through it, which is so many theories on moving water and the paranormal and that fueling things. And then the geological makeup of New England that I mentioned is very unique. I know there was this geological survey done. They were looking for all the high deposits of, of limestone and energy saving minerals. New England was a big hot spot and Estes Park, Colorado where the Stanley Hotel is was another big spot. Whoa. So um, there definitely could be all of that mixed together that's kind of creating this, this perfect energy. How many spirits have you talked to, uh, talked to, and where can you talk to them? Hundreds. Hundreds? More than that. Anywhere you can think of, we probably talk to a spirit, hospitals. I was going to ask, does it need to be a haunted location, or can you go to the middle of a field no. and there might be somebody there? There could, there could be. be. Not always. But everywhere where there's other people, usually there's a spirit there, because at least from what we've learned, everyone has somebody that's watching over them, ancestral lives, you know? That's so cool. That That... That, oh God, one of the reasons why it would kill me if they were to ever come out as fake, because I genuinely believe them. To me, they sound so genuine. They sound so kind. Some people were even coming at me saying, how could you believe them after all the facts that were proven and stuff? It's like, just let me, let me believe in them. Okay, let me believe in them until one day, if ever that day comes, that shows me otherwise. Multiple spirits have used the word good. It's very interesting. Nobody has said that they were stuck. We've had a spirit that was lost before. They were in a basement in a home and we had them come up because they shouldn't feel like they're left down there. They came upstairs and they went, where's my house? We're like, what are you talking about? And they gave us an address, the same number, but a different area. Oh. And so we told them where wow. to find it and you just hear them walk out of the room and that was the last time we ever talked to them and the people never reported having activity wow. in there after. Right, most people are coming back because they either love the house when they were alive or they're watching over somebody that's still alive and they want to say I love them I'm watching over them I'm okay don't have any regrets about what happened they need GPS's a lot of, a lot of yeah, stories messages that bring closure which that's why we, we could never put a, a price on giving somebody closure or a message from somebody that they really missed you know so most of it's positive do you think like the afterlife feels emotions like humans have you ever asked that we've had some angry spirits express that they're upset about things spirits asking us to change or recommend people change doing things things. I don't, I'm trying to think of what I can tell. I, I think they definitely still experience emotion. I mean, just with talking with Abigail, we've learned so much from her that some days she's still living in her world that she's like, some days she's ended conversations with her. I have to go tuck the kids in now and, and then she'll go off and do that. So that takes emotion, right? Yeah. That's showing comfort and love. We've talked to her at different age ranges uh, before. There's just so much that I don't think we'll ever be able to comprehend. Have you ever asked why? Well, why do they come back to check on us when they have this good place to be at? I think it's like visiting family, like you do when you're alive. I think it's that easy for them. They like the good place, and they're there a lot of the time. But sometimes they're like, you know, I want to make sure that my family's doing okay, or maybe they're trying to affect your decisions to make sure you're going to go on the right path or do the right thing. So they're trying to get involved as much as they can. I, I think they I don't think all of them are coming back. You know, I, I personally haven't had communication with most of my family members. Satori, on the other end, at. So I think some people, they like it where they are in that good place. This house was in the same family for a long time. It was cared about and loved by a lot of people. Where the house has been kept... <laughs> I, I gotta say, if I ever die, if I ever die, when I die, I don't know if I'll ever come back. I don't. I don't. Nah, maybe maybe if I pass away and, you know, I might want to... I guess if it's like, you know, one of those things, if you could just choose to come back whenever you want, I might pop on in to see if my kids are... Or my wife, you know, if she's still alive, doing okay and whatnot. I, I could see myself doing something like that. Just kind of just walk on in and be like, all right, <laughs> just walk out like every, every, maybe every week. But nah, man, one of the things that I'm afraid of, imagine, imagine watching one of your loved ones being like, and this is a dark kind of scenario, but imagine if you come back on the day that your loved one dies, or imagine if you get to learn the day that they die. Imagine when you die, you get to learn when your family members are going to die. Maybe that's none of your business in the afterlife. Even in the afterlife, maybe that's none of your business. But I always think about, like, I've thought about that several times. What if you came back on the day that your son was murdered? Or, like, you come back on the day your son or daughter or has, like, a heart attack or something. You have to watch them or you, like, are in the same room when it happens. I mean, I guess it would be kind of nice to know that you might be there just to at least comfort them when they cross over. So you're standing right there like, hey, there you are. But it would be kind of horrific to watch at the same time. I don't know. I personally, I don't know if I'd ever want to see that. I would probably just rather be on the other side. Just kind of in that better place, personally. And I'd rather be in heaven. 
I've been in the family for that long. And when they when they finally pass, they'll they'll see me again. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious to know what you guys think of that. That's a pretty interesting question. Of course, you would want to check in on it. It seems as though they can pick what age they really yeah. are. I mean, if they can pick their favorite part of their life and kind of relive that, and I assume that they could try. I mean, we never talked to a spirit that said they've been in the future, except for talking right now. I mean, if Abigail lived in the 1800s, she's obviously in the future in the now. Future. Right. Do they ever feel bored? Fucking mind blown right there. <laughs> or like that they don't want to be in something like infinity because the way we think about life is the fact that it is finite right. makes it so meaningful. So meaningful, right. We haven't had any conversations like that. No spirit has come forward and said they were bored or anything yet. I have a feeling that whatever realm they're in is operating on a totally different physics, emotional states, and things like that. Things that we assume here on Earth just wouldn't apply to mm -hmm. uh, that realm. And that's just me speculating, but right. One minute here on Earth, maybe five hours up there or something like that, or maybe the opposite. We're not really sure. Did spirits say, I'll be right back, and then we don't hear from them for like three days. They said they've been gone for just a couple of minutes. We had a spirit here come through one day. Um, his name was William. He said, what are you all doing in my house? And we went, what are you talking about? He's like, you're in my house. Where's all my furniture? And he's freaking out. And we said, can you tell us what time, what year it is? And he goes, what are you talking about? It's 1917. Wow. He said, I just went outside and I come back and you're in my house. So he thought we were ghosts. Maybe it's just like life over there. Well, that's also a kind of a reoccurring story with the actual Arnold estate. Uh, there was many times where the family would see another family just living life, and then they would look at the they would look at the parent family and be like, like looking at them as if they were ghosts. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty reoccurring thing that's happened several times. I, I don't know, I don't know. There's so many questions, isn't there? I don't know. It's weird. Why can't you answer some questions? Is there a reason and why not, you can't answer? This is what I was curious about. I'm sure a lot of people were curious about why can you answer some questions but not other questions? Some certain questions, like do the spirits tell you not to say things? <laughs> or uh, is it personal? Both. Both. There's some things that Jacqueline is not ready to announce about the house yet. There's some questions uh, that we've gotten answers to that I guess the spirits weren't ready to let people know, let people know about. There's and things that we haven't been ready to admit either yet, I think. Just because we're still processing it. I think the longer we do this, the more it's going to evolve as well. It's definitely kind of interesting and scary at the same time to see what it what it could. And then it could also go away tomorrow. You know what I mean? Right. It could just disappear. We don't want to do anything wrong, that's for sure. <laughs> Everyone knock on wood right now. <laughs> Have you guys found something out that is like, we'll never talk about that with anybody? Yes. And about like external things or more about like personal things? Um... They're really trying to get us. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. In, in general, like, um, are you finding something out about the world that you're like, humans probably shouldn't know that? Not so much uh, as far as people shouldn't shouldn't know. Like, I think if there was a message that everyone should know, we would definitely tell it, unless they said that we couldn't or something like that. But I guess most of it would be personal. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think most of it would be personal, personal stuff. Okay. Yeah. And there really isn't much. I mean, there's just a couple things that we've agreed not to at least talk about now, but maybe in the future. Every time it goes black, I want to talk because I feel like this is a good time to talk. Getting um, back to that that little scenario, I, I do think, and there's some people actually out there saying, you know, why can't they answer certain questions? Like I was watching debunking videos because, you know, I was trying to do that because it was requested for me. And one of the things was like, how can how come you can't answer certain things but other things? It's like, okay, for, first of all, first of all, if they if these two are legitimate, which I do believe genuinely that they are, I'm putting my faith in them. If it comes and bites me in the ass, that's on me. Don't worry about me. But if it comes back and bites me in the ass, that's on me. Uh, I'm putting my faith in them. There actually might be rules to what people can say or spirits can say to the living. You know, I mean, there, there, there might be actually things that they are not allowed to tell us because that is not just not our concern or that is none of our business. But that's just my thought. That's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong about that. But that's kind of, again, the fun part about the unknown is that I, we just don't know. What's the main message you've learned from the spirits? Everyone has someone that's watching out for them, even if you don't believe it. Life here on Earth is outstanding, no matter how bad it seems right now. Everything happens for a reason, the good and the bad. We learn lessons from the bad things that happen to us, and that kind of sets us on a new path. Everything happens for a reason, even, even the bad things. So you just have to push through that. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you go back up. Even though you, you may be in a really tough spot, someone is there with you, 100%, every single person. Don't be so close-minded, I guess. Yeah. 
because I was even skeptical of the paranormal and I'm part of a paranormal family so I was very skeptical of it. My entire belief system has changed. Honestly it's created an entire new belief system I didn't even know was a thing. Like I'm learning and, and changing my beliefs all the time so just don't be so close-minded I guess because yeah. there's always something that nobody knows. Yeah I mean the unknown can definitely be a scary place. All the messages we got have been of what, what Abigail said last night. Love. Positive messages. That was a demon impersonating someone. Then they go about their business after they give their message and that's one heck of a demon. A positive, <laughs> positive demon. Thing. <laughs> that demon had to think about that for a second. Yeah, he said, just love. And he just stood there just and just walks on, walks on away. It made no sense. That was a demon. There are already people speculating that Abigail's a demon. A demon wouldn't say love. Okay, a demon would be trying to fuck shit up. What do you people? What do people think of you both? Oh boy, oh boy. It's I hate to say it, but it, I mean it's it's understandable. Again, you gotta you gotta understand, and I don't think people are necessarily trying to hate hate on them. They're really just trying to ask questions, and when certain things don't get solid answers, people start really kind of going on the fence about certain things. It, it's one of those things that just got dropped on everybody. Now everybody's kind of like, oh my god, what is this? Like holy shit. So, it's understandable. I can't blame people for questioning them. We've had some people say, you know, you're talking to demons, impersonating oh people. Oh my gosh, we're aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we've gotten so many theories about all this. It's, really? it's really Are you guys aliens? That's one thing. <laughs> We've gotten so many things like that. You're aliens, you talk to demons, you have Bluetooth speakers in your pockets, like all sorts of theories we get from people. Double jointed toes. <laughs> We've heard a lot of crazy things. Why do you think uh, we, Sam and Colby, get activity everywhere we go? Maybe yeah. something is happening because you guys are together. Yeah, maybe you don't have to hold hands or something. I mean, we've all been at like parties or something like that, and the mood feels really good when you're around a really good group of people. When someone enters that room with bad energy, let's say, it kind of ruins the whole vibe yes. of the place. When you're around certain people that work well together, as far as the spirit world is concerned, that may create its own beacon as well and, and bring them in a little closer just to communicate and interact with equipment, recordings, and stuff like that. So maybe that's what you guys have. And, and maybe the more you keep doing that, and maybe experimenting with something else, maybe not holding hands, but testing it out. I'm not really sure what, but you might you know, find out. Always got to do a backflip. We'll try everything. But please send us the footage. Of please. I'll try. I'll, I'll try. Asking again, do you know uh, the impact this oh, could have on the camera? World? We just wanted to ask, like, do you guys? understand this could like change millions of people's lives <laughs> it changed ours this could be huge i don't know if you guys are like prepared for it when this video goes out and people can see everything that you do we're going to leave most of it uncut it's going to be a big splash i'm not even trying to sound like boastful or dramatic or anything but it could change the world wow. like view of spirits and stuff yeah this is so special probably the most That's undeniable big. thing anybody's ever seen about the afterlife Jeez. and like you guys have that oh yeah we don't we definitely don't realize that that's for sure no. Um, I'm trying to think of how to process that. I'm just saying, like, yeah, like no. without this, tens of millions of people are watching these videos. This is unheard of. If it's helping people, then that's that's why we're still doing this. I mean, if, it, if it's helping more people, then that's wonderful. So we knew we could do this since 2018. We kept it a secret till 2021, 2022. The reason we did was because we were afraid of how the public was gonna react. Even now we're still like slowly kind of doing it whenever it's supposed to happen. But we are prepared as long as it's helping people and maybe showing people that there is more. That's what it's about for us. And you know, getting the house out there and showing that the house is more than what some people just believe it is. That's the important thing. We are prepared though, because we have gotten both good opinions and bad opinions so we're prepared for both of it you know we're strong in our beliefs and what we do so right and of course we want to help everybody but it's impossible right we can't give a reading to everybody or give a session to, to everybody yeah we're not doing gallery readings or anything ever in the future <laughs> yeah, we're not yeah. taking money for this or anything but like i said it's a hundred percent that there's somebody out there watching you and if, and if you think you know who it is it probably is that person that's so encouraging to know <laughs> Making sure he's not poking his head over my shoulder. He might be. And by golly, these guys have gotten a lot of... Both love and hate. Both love and hate. I mean, there are people just 
really coming after them. Like, really coming after them. They are showing their fangs. I mean, they are, yikes. Ooh, some people are really giving them hell. And I, I've, said it, I've said it many times. I've said it many times. If they ever were to come out, let's say, ever in the history of ever, ever come out as fake, I would be also somebody bearing their fangs. Because I love that video so much. One Week at the Conjuring House. I love the series. It opened my eyes even more. I mean, obviously, I'm a believer in the paranormal. Even if these two had not come by, I'm still a big believer in the paranormal. I've had my own experiences. I've lived in haunted houses. I know what it's like to experience the paranormal, things you can't explain. So it doesn't matter whether they were fake or not. I'm still a believer. But to really just, you know, that confirmation that people are around you, imagine all of that just was a giant lie. Oh, my God. I mean, I broke into tears watching that video because of how much I loved the confirmation by these two. And if they ever were to come out as liars, I'm a pretty forgiving guy. I don't know how I could forgive somebody who would make me cry like that and make me so happy like that. That that would be the most evil shit. I'm putting my faith in them. I'm trusting them. I do believe in them. What do the spirits think of us sharing this information? Abigail specifically had either told you guys or just knew that we were coming, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think that every single thing that we've captured, Abigail would be okay with, or the spirit realm would be okay with sharing to the world? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think okay. from what we understand, she just wanted to let you guys know because this is the first time. It took us so long to describe to her how this works mm -hmm. because she's from a different time. When we described it to her because she knew you guys were coming, she kept saying, I want to talk to them, I want to talk to them. I want to let them know that I'm real. I'm a real person. I'm kind. She kept telling us that she's like, I want them to know I'm kind. She's happy as long as like she was able to trust you guys and you guys get out there that this is actually a thing. Right. You know? And another thing with this house, there's been so many misconceptions about it, even about the spirits that we communicated with. And I think it's Thank the movies for that. You know, that word kind of gets out and the misinformation gets fixed. She definitely trusted you guys to, to go through with that. Great. You know, she's expressed sometimes when she's upset, which I guess proves that there's emotion oh, about, you, you know, some people coming in and thinking that she's evil right out of the bat. And so she wanted to correct a lot of this. She just wants you to know, like, there's nothing to worry about. I'm just a happy colonial era woman. If you're scared of a woman coming through and telling you, I want my pear trees replanted in the side <laughs> yard, and, you know, I love the color that you painted the room, then I don't know what to tell you. How do you think this works and why do you think they chose When it first started, we thought someone was hiding in a, a closet somewhere and just knocking on the wall or something. Of course, we would love to figure out how this works at some point, for sure. But we're not out here to, to prove that what we're doing is legitimate. I think that's why we only do it for people that cross our paths naturally. And if we get invited to go somewhere, we'll, we'll do it. I think that's why whatever it was chose you guys. Because that's your mindset. Super awesome. interesting. For real. I think it's why they choose certain people, because they know what you're going to do. But, you know, I would say this. If you really wanted to put the the, hater, the haters and the naysayers to rest, to get with somebody who would try to debunk you, the full, like, go full on try to debunk you, would be the best way to do it. Especially if you have nothing to hide. Especially if you have nothing to hide. So, you saying that you're not going to do it for people who are intentionally, like, trying to debunk or, like, you know, say su such things, but you just do it for the na the normal people who come by you? I mean, that, again, is not something that makes you look too good in the public eye. I'm sure there are people who just looked at that quote right there, that comment, and said, well, yeah, because you know you're faking it. I mean, that's immediately what they're going to go to. And if you're okay with if you're okay with the haters, then, you know, by all, by all means, keep doing what you're doing, but... I mean, until you legitimately go through every kind of, you know, debunking method, I'm sure there are still going to be people who are going to question you full on. Do with that, and you guys have this great philosophy of like, I want to help people. Yeah. I want to do this for very specific people to give the message that you are, and you're not doing it for the money. You're not doing it for the fame. You're just like, let's help people. Yeah, yeah. And there's a very few select people in this world now that do things like that. Cool. Well, we appreciate that. And my question is, why you guys? Why did they want to talk to you? Why did they want to share this message through you guys? Maybe they knew getting this message to you, you guys weren't going to just throw it out and go do something different. Maybe you guys are kind of the same thing. You're, you're humble, you're nice, you're kind, you know, maybe they knew that you guys were going to do that. I personally believe, and I have my own theory to this, you know, the last message that Abigail gave us was live life to the fullest. 
And I'm going to be honest, one of the biggest groups or duo of people that I know on the platform who live life to the fullest is Sam and Colby. They absolutely live life to the fullest. They're doing something almost new every single day. So they're like the perfect people to kind of go around and tell people to live life. It's the best. They're, they're some of the best group of people to do that. So, yeah, that's my personal opinion. They live life every day. The spirits probably recognize that. Everything happens for a reason. Everything yes. does. If there's anybody out there that goes out looking for this stuff, I think your senses, you were given them for a reason, and I think you should use them, especially for individuals who believe that they're more sensitive to this type of thing. I definitely think you should explore that more. It's not a bad thing to be more open to this stuff. It may seem scary at some times if you're seeing things. I mean, Satori and I can't see anything. We like to say we're a psychic as a bag of rocks or something like that. I mean, it just happens whenever we do that. So if you're experiencing stuff like that, definitely keep exploring it. The equipment is awesome. Use it to kind of validate what's going on around you, but don't pay attention to the equipment solely. You could miss whatever's happening. Yeah. Kindness in being gentle works a lot better than provoking in being rude. Also, if you want to try communicating with the dead, here's a fun piece of advice. We found that junk food and sugar helps. That's interesting. Who is Dave? Oh, this we do good. know that one of the original Arnold family members had a brother named David who did serve, I believe, in the revolution. So I'm not sure wow. if that's who you're encountering. And that's really like the only Dave that's really associated with the family line that lived in this house that we've been able to locate so far. Mm -hmm. Or it's somebody totally But we've talked to family members from people here. I'm sure there are spirits that pass through all the time. So who knows, you know, it could have been anybody. Interesting. What do we know? What do we need to know about the woods? We've had the spirits inside tell us to be careful of the woods. They know that there's something outside that's completely out of there, you know, like it's completely different. One of the first nights we were staying here at the house as caretakers, we woke up at like midnight early in the morning because we were hearing drumming and it was coming up from the back of the house and we started getting really nervous because it was just one particular beat, like boom, 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 boom. And it's the drums of liberation. It kept happening. All the motion detections in the front yard, like somebody was coming around the driveway, started going off. And Some then of you it will sounded get like that. it was right outside the door. And so we locked the doors in the employee quarters and we waited in the loft. And then all of a sudden the power in the house went out. The drumming stopped. At this point, I'm like close to tears. I'm like, we need to call Jacqueline because I think mm -hmm. like something's going to happen. Like yeah. we're, we're terrified. We've only ever heard that beat one other time from a video that a friend of ours had shown us from a local Native American group it was described as a pre-war drumming i'm not sure if that was residual or not but it was definitely scary <laughs> when yeah. we were here just because it was so unknown we didn't mm -hmm. know what was going on all the camera systems went down everything especially over the bridge i think that that is a different territory for why sure. did you do that <laughs> i don't like over the bridge i don't go over the bridge especially at nighttime like that's just something that for some reason my senses go don't do it so i don't do it the spirit in the basement i don't know if it's just being a trickster but they told they said go out to the woods and i'm not fond of that so i'm just trusting my gut on it i do not go past the bridge i think there's some things out there and at least for us sometimes it's more difficult to communicate out there with our methods sometimes it's, it's more difficult to get straight answers which i guess puts us on edge a little bit more as well mm -hmm. definitely a lot of tricky things out there a lot of mischievous things interesting Great. What is Abigail's final message? Hey, Abigail, one more time. Are you busy? There she is. Abigail? Hi, how are you? Good, that's good. Is there anything else you want to tell potentially millions of people right now about the spirit realm? Any message that you have, anything. The stage is yours. Do you have any last words? A, B, C, D, E, F. That's so weird. That is so weird. The knocking sounds like it's on the floor. Okay, I, I watched a debunking video earlier, and the, the knocking sounded similar in a sense, but this sounds like it's actually on the wooden floor itself, like an actual shoe on the wooden floor, not like a bone being popped or a muscle being popped. Gosh, just hearing it again, so cool. G H I J K L A B C D E F G H I life. 
A no A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V live. You want everybody to live their life to the fullest? Good. That's good to hear. <laughs> That's amazing. Just want to say overall thank you so much, Abigail. You've uh, changed a lot of people's lives. How does that feel? Good. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have anything to say on that besides it's, that feels good? <laughs> she walk away? I don't know. Hello? There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> still here, the hell? Did you think you would ever be heard by that many people? <laughs> no. What would you like to say? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, B, C, D, E, A, thank you. <laughs> You're thank you. Thank you. Wow. I'm gonna give a lot of people hope, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you so much. <laughs> she's gone. Walk away. Yeah, she's gone. Wow. It's amazing. Thank you guys for coming. Of that course. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having us along for the investigations with you guys. It was fun. Literally <laughs> changed our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good. I cried in every fucking video because <laughs> of him. Thank you. Cat, okay, this is a, uh, we've seen this before. This is in part four. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it, it's still really cool to see, though. I mean, that mess, that final message by Abigail, to me, is so heartfelt. I mean, fuck. It's so good. Can I give you a hug? It's Your crying nice. makes me want to give you a hug. Oh. Oh. Uh, want, let's do a group hug. <laughs> let's do a group Thanks. hug. Everybody. <laughs> Bobby, are you going to hug? Awesome. Beautiful week, guys. Thank oh, you. Of True. course. If you ever find that you need weird knocking noises anywhere else, you know where to find us. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you moving right now? Because I feel it right now. Is it my legs? That, maybe. But it's been happening. Like, I haven't been time. doing it. There was one time I knew it was us, but then I'm not sure about the chair. Does it feel like this? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just like going to try to stay still. It could have been me. I don't know. I don't know if I was moving too much. See, oh, I heard that. See, that's what I'm thinking. Like, that is just your... <laughs> that's... That's what I'm <laughs> Love it. Love it. I'm choosing to believe in them. I, they seem so genuine. I'm not even sure what else to say because I've already feel like I've said everything I wanted to about this entire subject. But yeah, hearing the full interview was really uh, definitely something I wanted to do. Definitely something I wanted to share with you guys. Obviously, I wanted to, you know, I'm trying to dive into this as much as possible. But there's really not a whole lot more I can say about the subject itself. I mean, I can keep watching debunking videos and stuff. But at the end of the day, I've already chosen to put my faith in them. And I won't, I won't call them fakers and I won't call them liars until the day they actually or something comes out to where it shows that they are faking and lying. I, I won't call them it. I'm, I trust you guys. I trust Satori, Code, I, I trust you. All right, guys. Well, that was it for that video. I hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Again, give me your own personal comments down below. Now, at the end of the day, I want to say that if you are going into the comment section just to stir up hate, just to stir up, you want to just bully people for what they believe in and stuff, you want to just go after people, you want to troll, don't even bother, please. You can have fair conversations about the subject. You know, show respect to other people. Whether you are a non-believer or a believer, it doesn't matter. Just show respect. Be kind, be courteous in the comment section. I don't want this community to be a place where you guys can just come and start slamming each other, start calling each other names. It's just not the place for it, so please don't do that. Please just be respectful. At the end of the day, it's, it's supposed to be a fun community where we have conversations about it. It's okay if you don't believe. It's okay if you believe. Give your reasons. Understandable. 100%. I get it. So please do that. Um, and until next time, guys, do keep it retro and do take care.